welcome your faces back to a new video. A viewer reached out to me via email and asked if I wanted to try and repair three of his Nintendo Switch motherboards. Motherboard number one was a battery connector trace repair job, which we managed to resolve. Unfortunately, with Switch number two, prior repair attempts had been done on the board and it made it almost impossible for us to fix. And Switch number three, in my opinion, was a very, very interesting repair, which is why I'm going to show you it in this video. These clips have been taken from my live stream because I know that not everybody can make them. And occasionally there'll be a really intriguing fix that I just have to post as a video. And this is one of them. So sit back, relax, enjoy your beverage of choice whilst I repeatedly bang my head against the wall trying to repair this Nintendo Switch. So George says for this one, the board has a loose USB-C port. I've replaced it, knocking down some small components near P13 USB. After that, I replaced M92T36 again, messing up really bad. Some of the microscopical components around it, it was missing a tiny fuse next to the charging port. The board was showing an error on the screen of 21010001. Pretty sure again, that's M92T36 or at least the components around it. So let's have a look and see what we are going to experience. Uh, more than happy for you to keep it spares. As long as you're sure, my friend, let's have a look and see what's going on with this one. I appreciate it everything you've said with your honesty and that's why i'm more than happy to take at least take a look at it all right so there's quite a few missing components here yeah you were right how was your soldering around m92t when i say quite a few there's a lot of components missing here how's the actual m92t36 chip looking don't know if i mean look the the pads could be soldered underneath we're going to take it off anyway and sort all of that okay we can get this sorted though i can put all those components back no problem we'll tin all the pads take m92 t36 off what do we have missing down here if anything as well straighten up these components that components come off the pads as you can see and then the fuse i don't know if you said that the fuse has been replaced or not but if it has it's a good job uh we've got the zener diodes you said you replaced the port as well i'm just checking around bq to make sure nothing's happened around there that looks all okay and then you said back of the port where p13 is so we've got a couple of filters that are missing is that just solder bridging the two together yes it is so we can sort that out as well or is that wire is that wire because you've tried sorting it fair enough and we've got some components missing here um and just checking around so the port itself does it need a new port that yeah it needs a new port as well okay let's get cracking i can tidy up this area first yeah ultrasonic cleaner facts it's a different fuse you've done a good job with the fuse my friend and props to you for at least trying wow that doesn't want to come off that did not want to come off now it is going to sizzle, but I need the board to be hot when I'm cleaning this because we have a lot of stuff that needs to be cleaned. Chat, you tell me if it looks better already. Ready? Does it look better? I think so. We'll get, we'll get it sorted. We'll get it sorted. I'm going to try anyway. We obviously want to get rid of any excess solder as well. That looks fine now. This is going to be a slow but sure sort of jobby, jobby job. If you have a board that's really hot and then you go and apply something that's relatively cold, it can cause the board to misshape and all sorts of bits and bobs. It's not great for the board. I'll measure this resistor in a minute just to make sure we're putting it back in the right place. But I think this one is going to go there. Trust the process, by the way. Trust the process. Yo. Found your YouTube channel a few hours ago. Just watched five vids. Love your work. Keep at it. You're getting my first ever Twitch bits. New uh, to Twitch. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Sleepless. Thank you so much. That means a lot. Seriously. That's amazing. And welcome to the community, my friend. Thank you. It's great to hear. I appreciate that a lot. What are Twitch bits? Um, Twitch bits are a way to support the streamer. So you buy the bits and then uh, you can support me as the streamer by giving me those bits, donating those bits, essentially. Wait, did that actually not solder to the board? Is that pad coming off? No, it's just not. I don't know why, for whatever reason, this cap just isn't accepting GG. As if. That needs to get off whatever it is. Not having you sabotage the board as well. Get off. All right, how are we looking? Uh, that cap as well. Got all these down there as well. GG. Nearly there, I think. Again, I can sort that out. Not a problemo. I might actually just be able to do that quick now. Lovely. 
Now, where did you go? You on the... Yeah, lovely. Good stuff. That's what we love to see. Get up there. Do you know what? Even if I just... Tack it down. And then go for the rotation. Lovely. There's a cap. Is it a resistor and a cap there? Yeah, it is. And these two are actually blank, by the way. Where you've got... Where I've got some bits here. These are actually blank. We don't have anything here. We're not meant to. Okay. Uh, that's that circuit completed. Uh, we have everything that we're supposed to have down here. It needs a good clean. And obviously we need M92T36 sorted as well. So whilst we're here, let's do that. And then we'll give the board a nice clean. Need to pump some heat into this board soon. Even more than what it's had already, which is a lot. I might need to add the V3TF here, maybe, because of the thickness. I'll go with this. Oh, shall I use the skinny iron and see how we get on? Why not? Let's try it. If it doesn't work out, we'll switch iron. Let's see what if this is good or not. Yeah, it's doing the job perfectly. Look at that. Lovely jubbly. Oosh kaboosh. Joey looks like I'll be sticking with my laptops and e-bike repairs and leave the Nintendo Switches for you. Uh, if you don't practice, you won't get better though, mate. So, like I said, props to you for actually giving it a go. You should have seen me. I mean, you can do on my uh, on my channel. You can see the struggles and stuff that I went through when I was doing this originally, you know. When I first picked this up, holy, your attempt was way cleaner than mine. We're going to get a big bubble there, so I'm actually going to just wick away some of that. What is this bit of sandwich here that keeps popping up? I don't usually, but I am going to squeeze down, by the way, here. I don't usually do it. Right. Make sure M92T36 is connected. Yes. 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 Guys, is that a lot better than what it was before? Yes or no? I think we've got all the components on there that I need. This port needs to come off. Do you know what? Because of the way that the port is, I wonder if I can actually just put this... No, because the, the pin's underneath, right? Well, I only need to be testing it, really. Okay, listen. Just for the sake of it, for the sake of science, I am going to try and put this back to how it should be. Let's see if those are a little bit... No, they're not. Look, so I need, it, I need to get it push down a little bit more if i hang out over the edge i reckon i would be able to i could also just solder the pins manually but we're not going to do that we're just going to take it straight off the board let me take the port off very quick and i'm doing that by simply doing exactly what i just did on camera by the way okay what do we have absolutely fine so what, what do we do here take a soldering iron clean this is a screw hole which shouldn't have solder in. And now it doesn't. But I think I've taken solder out of the uh, ground hole below that. So we will sort that. Now we need to sort the back out. Because that is an area of contention at the moment. Get those wires off the board. Now, hot air toothbrush clean first. This looks a bit better now on the back as well, right? Compared to what it did. Need to clean my nozzle on the flux. Look at that. Look at this flux. Here we go. Floaty. Where's that cap gone? I was about to say floating to place, but um, one of them wanted to disappear on me, eh? Joey, the bottom right cap. <laughs> What's it doing down there? Get off. Is that the one from there? Amazing. It went on holiday. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So we're going to check for shorts now after we clean up this absolute mess because of how much flux and stuff we've used. He said in chat the P13 was original. Okay, cool. Thank you. I'm going to leave it as is then. It won't need a reflow if that's the case. I thought it had been replaced. Here we go. That's how that's looking compared to what it was looking like at the start. Now we can just put a port on. Bob's your uncle and all that good stuff, hey? I like to get rid of excess, flu excess flux. Helps to make sure we don't get any unwanted flux inside the port. And I'm not like scraping down hard here. We might have a little bridge there, but that will sort itself underneath. Don't worry. And it's ground, I think, underneath. On those two that are joined. 
but we should be fine. Lovely. Right, flux, flux, flux. Not too much. Wicked, that's a great amount. 450 degrees Celsius, airflow speed, 50%. I would love to do the same thing as you, but I don't have a lot of money to do it. Uh, you don't necessarily have a lot of money. Have to have a lot of money to do it. You can buy yourself like a full soldering iron set for twenty pound on Amazon, and just uh, and just kind of get get tinkering. My point is that you can you can start small. Don't be put off by like soldering stations that are 300, 400 pounds. I'm just rotating the heat underneath the board now. Again, four hundred and fifty degrees Celsius, airflow speed fifty percent. You can see that the, the pads have now wet or are starting to wet. Yeah, see that, and we should see. Any second now. The other bits will go. Where that solder is flowing. Right. Let's put the port on. Not ready yet. Continue to rotate the heat. Try now. Port is not sat down properly. That's fine. I'm just going to make the port hot. Now, what do you, what do you mean, Joey? Make the port hot. I'm just going to keep rotating the uh, the air. And I'm just going to gently tap down because in that bottom, in that top right hand corner for you right now, see that look? Not doing anything. I'm just rotating, rotating the heat. But I'm going to tap it now and make it flat to the board. See that? Now what I'm going to do is just wiggle this port about. So I wiggle it to make sure that the solder on the pins is, is bonding with the pads on the board. Yeah. Move a little bit of solder around, get it nice and snug. There we go. Make sure that those pads are definitely connecting to the pins. Just there. Looks like a good port to me. Now what I'm going to do is hone in on the hot air. Push down with my tweezers. You come off. Keep held down. Sometimes it's inevitable you need to go over the pins. Sometimes it's just not your day. Believe me. Now I'm going to come off. That little wriggle technique made my HDMI port work and everything yeah. so much more consistent. Thank you, Joey. No, that's okay. No problem. Sometimes you just can't help it. This might not be okay. The pins might look okay here, but they might be awful. You never know until you give it a test. Now, are these pins solid or not? Let's have a look. That one isn't. 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 That one is. That one is. So the ones underneath, am I confident that they're going to be okay? Not too sure. How flat is the port? It's over. Can you see it's a little bit up there? So I'm going to, I'll attempt the reflow again. I personally think that something is stopping it from going down on this side because look, there's something over here that's stopping it. So I'm going to try and push down over here and come off. So I'm pushing down over here now. Is it even? I mean, it looks a little bit more even, hey? I know this one's going to be solid and I know probably these ones over here are solid. It's these ones that I have a... Okay, so it's just that one. That one's also... That one's solid as well. It's just this one pin here. I'm now confident that the ones underneath are probably going to be solid. I don't like to go over the pins, to be honest, because it, it to me, it's like, well, are they okay underneath? But in this scenario, I had to. Sometimes it could be a warp board. It could be anything. And sometimes you do just need to manually go over them after dropping it on. Uh, now, all we have to do is, is test for shorts quickly. And then we can uh, get going. We don't have any shorts here. Good. No shorts there. CPU cap. Fine. All right, we're good. Apparently, this was changed out. Good. Again, this is previous technician where they've, the flux has just come all around here. I don't want to clean it out because the second I put flux in this connector, I have to change it out. That's all good. Three, two, one. I think something's blown. It's not a dodgy port because it would flicker on and off. Because we're not even getting 15 in. Charge is not even turning on. Okay, so that's a no. You see how it says OL? So that means, where is that then? Where am I getting the open line? So it's going to be D plus, D minus. No, D plus and D minus are fine. Wait, if D minus and D plus are fine here, what am I getting here? 0 0.4. Strange. I'm, I'm sure that I'm getting readings where I don't have here, which might indicate that it's a port or the actual, li these little Zener diodes, maybe. So that's open line. That's open line. That's ground, which is right. Here, 0 0.4. Here, 0 0.482. Here, 0 0.7. Here, 0 0.7. Here. 0 0.7. Strange. And then on the actual ammeter itself, they're all shown as open line. So it could be the actual port itself. No, the port looks relatively clean. There's a, there's a bit down the back, but on in terms of on the actual pins themselves, no, that's they're, they're clean. Wait a minute. I thought that, I thought I had uh, bridge pins there, but I don't. Okay, let's take this one off. These aren't needed, by the way. 
There's one on the back as well. You can check continuity on the filters. Don't think that would uh, give us the issue that we're currently getting, but it's worth a check. All good. I've got D plus and D minus here. So we'll have D plus here and D minus or other way around. And I get 0 0.7 on each one. So I definitely get it here. Yeah, I still don't have B8 or D minus. Uh, it's going to be poor. It has to be. All right, I'm going to remove all the solder that I had on the pads and the uh, the holes themselves now. Because that's what I said, didn't I? Because I didn't remove it before. I just mixed it with the leather. I don't think M92T36 is an issue. But it will be the next thing I change. The, the solder is very... Oh, I put the fume extractor on. Can you see, look, how strong this solder is? A port would have fallen out ages ago for me, usually. Open line. Open line. 0 0.4. 0 0.4. 0 0.7. 0 0.7. 0 0.6. 0 0.4. Open line, open line, ground. Yeah, it was the port. It was the port. So we just put some flux where we need it. Tin. Our pads. Same speed and air that we use to take it off. So this is 450 and 50. How many Q-tips do I use a week? A lot more now that I'm doing this full time, that's for sure. Solid, 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 solid. Solid, 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 solid. USB-C tester. Show us what we got, my friend. Same. Exactly the same. Hmm. Something's not right when they're connecting. Definitely a clean port. That's how I do every single Nintendo Switch port that I do. Let me, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll pull P13 and then we'll see. Should we put another one straight on chat? Or do you think that I should um, test without P13? Because I think I'm going to get open line without P13, right? So I don't think it makes a difference. I just can't really get over the data plus data minus thing. Because I'm sure that data plus data minus doesn't go to P13 USB. I'm sure that goes straight into the um, APU. So where it has these open lines. These were open lines before. Now they're not. So when, when P13 is removed, they are now not open lines. So I wonder if I put a P13 on from a donor. I wonder if that fixes that. Let's try that then. D minus, D plus, D plus, D minus. Okay, so I get D plus, D minus, which I wasn't getting before. Uh, it was B8, which I'm still not getting. And it was A8. I'm getting A8, but I'm not getting B8. I know that that port was clean. I know that port was clean. Wait, this is ground. Why is that ground? And I get a diode reading here. So I get a diode reading here, that's fine. Diode reading here. Died reading here, but that shouldn't be ground. They're OL. These are OL, which is what they should be. This one's ground. Why is that ground? That shouldn't be ground, should it? No, it definitely shouldn't be ground. Okay, so at least I found something wrong. And I get zero. I get zero point four. Go into that. Where does this filter go? Is the filter shorted? It's, it's just a. It's just a bit of wire, right? Like I don't understand. It's not ground anymore. It's not ground. So it's that. It's that filter. Was that the issue? It's weird because I tested them, obviously, but it had continuity through the filter because it was ground to ground. So if that one goes disappearing, by the way, I'm not too fussed about it. No ground. No ground. Okay. Surely that can't, can't account for all of the issues that we had, though. Let me just test. I still don't have B3. So VCC, B5, D+. I have B8, D-, minus, A5, D+, plus, D-, minus, A8, VCC. Uh, maybe they're meant to be. I don't think they are meant to be open line. A10, A10 and B3, guys. I am flabbergasted. I'm absolutely flabbergasted. Just for the sake of it. And then I really have to go. <laughs> I have to be careful because I don't want the port falling out. There's no way that the port is the issue, by the way. I don't think the port was the issue last time. I think we can all agree that. Last time to check what happens. Teasing. Oh my god. I don't believe it. It was the filters. Okay, so quickly then. Oh my god. Even though the filters measured okay. Look, I can't believe it. Look at that. It works. That works. 0 0.6, 0 0.10, 0, 0, 0. That's exactly what it should be doing. Watch. Both sides. 0 0.7, 0 0.10, 0, 0. It works. It was the filters. I can't believe it. 
I apologize for the slightly anticlimactic ending. Uh, usually I end my streams at around about half past five in the afternoon and that's when my dinner is ready and I'd gone past half past five in the stream. But I'm super happy obviously that it worked and a massive thank you to everyone in the chat who helped along the journey. I have since tested the device fully and can confirm that it's all working as it should. I've never had that specific issue before with the filters. And the part that caught me out is that usually when I measure the filters, I go from point A to point B. And as long as I've got a continuous path and it's not crossing over, I count them as okay. But it's actually very rare that I check diode mode on the filters. So maybe that's something that I could have done earlier on in the process. It may have took us a while to get there, but we got there in the end and that is what counts. As always, I really hope you enjoyed. I'll leave a video up here, which is similar to the one that you've just watched. I live stream these sorts of fixes on both YouTube and Twitch. So follow me on Twitch as well. Hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the YouTube, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.